Hi guys, this is Vinuri from Learn with Men Nuggets. In this video, I'm going to talk about Guillain-Barr syndrome. Guillain-Barr syndrome is a neurological disorder in which the immune system attacks part of the peripheral nervous system. It is an acute inflammatory polyneuropathy that causes an acute flaccid paralysis. So, it is a quick onset condition that affects the peripheral nerves causing weakness and sensory loss. Guillain-Barr syndrome is usually triggered by an infection. The most common infection is Campylobacter jejuni infection that can cause gastroenteritis. It can also be triggered by cytomegalovirus infection, Epstein-Barr virus infection, mycoplasma pneumonia and Haemophilus influenza. Now let's look into the pathophysiology of Guillain-Barr syndrome. Following an infection such as Campylobacter jejuni infection, our antigen-presenting cells will present these microbial antigens to T and B lymphocytes. The B lymphocytes then differentiate into plasma cells, which secrete antibodies. These antibodies secreted by the plasma cells bind to bacterial antigens to kill the bacteria. But our nerve cells also express proteins similar to these bacterial antigens. Therefore, the antibodies they get confused and bind to these antigens expressed by the nerves, resulting in demyelination of nerve roots and peripheral nerves. Patients with Guillain-Barr syndrome start having symptoms within four weeks of a preceding infection such as gastroenteritis and they reach maximum weakness within two to four weeks, and the disease is unlikely to progress beyond four weeks. Patients with Guillain-Barr syndrome present with bilateral symmetrical ascending weakness. That is, the weakness starts at the feet and then ascends upward to the upper limbs and cranial nerves. So patients can have facial nerve weakness as well. They will also have reduced reflexes. We call this global areflexia. And they will also have neuropathic pain and peripheral loss of sensation. The main complications of Guillain-Barr syndrome are respiratory paralysis and autonomic dysfunction. So how do we diagnose patients with Guillain-Barr syndrome? The most important in the diagnosis of this condition is the clinical picture of acute flaccid paralysis. But there is no specific test for Guillain-Barr syndrome. However, there is a criteria called Brighton criteria that can assist us in diagnosing Guillain-Barr syndrome. This criteria includes bilateral flaccid limbo weakness, decreased or absent tendon reflexes, a monophasic cause with the interval between onset and nadir of weakness between 12 hours to 28 days, nerve conduction studies that are consistent with GBS, increased cerebrospinal fluid protein concentration, and cerebrospinal fluid cell count less than 50 cells per microliter, and the absence of an alternative diagnosis for the weakness seen in this condition. Also, the diagnosis of Guillain-Barr syndrome can be supported by other investigations such as a nerve conduction study, which will show a reduced conduction velocity due to the demyelination, and also a lumbar puncture, which will show CSF with a raised protein count, but normal cell count and normal glucose. Now let's move on to the management of Guillain-Barr syndrome. Specific therapy for Guillain-Barr syndrome involves treatment with intravenous immunoglobulins or plasma exchange to remove the antibodies. Supportive care should be given such as proper bowel and bladder care. Artificial tears can be used to prevent corneal ulceration due to facial nerve weakness. And also it's important to give deep venous thrombosis prophylaxis to prevent blood clots and also change the position of the patient on the bed frequently to prevent decubitus ulcers because these patients are mostly bedridden. We also have to monitor and manage the complications in these patients. For respiratory muscle paralysis, we have to monitor the vital capacity. 
If the vital capacity goes below 50 ml per kilogram, then we should ventilate the patient. If we cannot monitor the vital capacity, then single breath count can be done to monitor respiratory function. You should ask the patient to take a deep breath, hold and count as much as he can. Normally, patients should be able to count up to 25. If it is progressively declining, the patient should be admitted to the ICU. For autonomic dysfunction, pulse rate, heart rate and blood pressure should be monitored. Physiotherapy for patients with Guillain-Barre syndrome should be started early in the course of the disease. And rehabilitation should be started as soon as the patient starts improving. Thank you for watching this video. If you learned something from this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much.